title, your description, and in your tags. And when it comes down to all three of those areas, it comes down to search engine optimization. What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is DJ Rick Webb as always, and in today's video, I polled on Facebook. I went on Facebook and I was asking people, I'm like, what is the number one and maybe the number two problem you are struggling with in your DJ career, your DJ business, period. And pretty much unanimously, people were talking about marketing. They were struggling with marketing. And in general, most DJs were asking for free ways to marketing because most DJs don't want to spend a lot of money on marketing. Uh, I'm kind of a little different. I spend quite a bit of money on marketing, but I do do a lot of tactics that are free and I'm going to be sharing with you guys all of the tactics, tips, tricks, and places that you can do free marketing for your DJ business to help grow it. So let's jump on into it. All right, so kicking it off, we're gonna be talking about probably one of the biggest and the easiest ways to do free marketing, and that is social media. And in particular, there's only like three platforms that I really focus on. There are endless platforms, and you could probably, if you want to, you can post everywhere. You can post on Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, but that's probably gonna eat up a lot of your time and you're probably not gonna be effective by posting on everywhere, but it could help, you never know. In reality, I'm only focusing on Instagram and YouTube because my Instagram and my Facebook are linked so that whenever I post on Instagram, it automatically posts the same thing on Facebook. So really, I'm just updating our Instagram and our YouTube, and I'm talking about our company pages and all my personal pages. And speaking of posting, you want to post often. I try to shoot for about once a week. I have a notification on my phone that goes off once a week to remind me to post something on Instagram. How sad is that? I'm really good about posting stories, but I tend to slack on actual posts. And speaking of that, what should you be posting and what do I post? Well, if any of you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys know that I post a little bit of like personal life stuff, but I also post a lot of behind the scenes stuff of what I'm doing for the company whether it's creating a new timeline for my couples, creating an edit for one of my couples first dances that's coming up, or packing gear, working on gear. The, the couples really don't care to see the gear stuff, but it's nice to show that you're actually doing stuff behind the scenes and you're actually working hard for their upcoming events. And then obviously when it comes to actually doing weddings and the events you're doing, you want to post them on Instagram. You want to post high quality photos for them. You want to post some video clips. You want to post some Instagram stories. And speaking of stories, Instagram stories in particular, I'm going to link down below uh, my good friend DJ Mojo. He made a complete video on how he does his Instagram stories. And let me tell you, he is killing it. He goes ham and hardcore on these Instagram stories, like tagging vendors, like text, all these geo tags. And he goes into complete detail on how he makes his Instagram stories and how he does them. I highly recommend the video, guys. It is super helpful. Um, I don't think I'm gonna go to that level because he just, he. I commend him. Mojo, you do a great job on your Instagram stories. I've told him that in person before, but he made a whole video on it. Go check it out if you want to know how to do killer Instagram stories for your events. But anyways, post often, post stories, post about what you're doing behind the scenes, post about the events, do that sort of stuff on your social media. Now, some other bonus tips for Instagram and Facebook. Follow your couples. Follow the couples that you are going to be DJing for. Follow the companies that you're gonna be DJing for. Follow them. You wanna follow them for a few reasons. One, if it's a couple you're gonna be DJing their wedding in six months, 12 months, well, following them on Instagram, they're obviously gonna follow you back. And when you're posting this stuff about all these events you're doing, it reassures them that you are a great DJ. They get to see you doing other weddings and events and stuff like that, and it builds hype. They get excited for their wedding, and they get excited that you're gonna be part of their wedding. And two, when you're at these events, you're at these weddings, you're at these school dances, when you post stuff on social media, you can tag the couple, you can tag the vendors. And when you tag them and they get the notification that you tagged them, they're gonna have the ability to then share your post on their platforms, extending your reach, AKA your market. Now that's Facebook and Instagram. And the third one I mentioned is YouTube. And obviously on YouTube, what you wanna be posting is videos. You wanna post videos of your events. You wanna post videos of you DJing. You wanna post videos of clients having a great time. And well, it might not be the best source of marketing per se, but it will be a good portfolio 
for you to send potential leads that you get on Facebook and Instagram to see bigger, longer videos of you actually DJing in person and actually rocking crowds at events. But I do have one sort of marketing tip, tool, trick uh, for YouTube, and that is what you put in your title, your description, and in your tags. And when it comes down to all three of those areas, it comes down to search engine optimization. So you want to be tagging stuff and putting stuff in your title and description that clients or couples will be searching for. Some examples are venues. So if you're DJing at a very popular venue in your area, you want to put that venue name in the title of that video, put it in the description and put it in the tags. Along the lines of that, you want to be tagging the city and the state that you're in. So for me, DJ North Carolina, wedding DJ North Carolina. Believe it or not, I've actually booked weddings before because the couples have gone on YouTube and searched for wedding DJ in this city, wedding DJ in this state, wedding DJ at this venue in this state. So having videos with tags for cities, states, and the venues that you're at are key for search engines so that you pop up on their search results. The next thing that you can do for free marketing is sign up for Wedding Wire and The Knot. But Rick, Wedding Wire and The Knot cost thousands of dollars. How am I supposed to advertise for free when they cost thousands of dollars? I don't have that kind of money. Believe it or not, you can actually set up a free account on Wedding Wire and The Knot. You don't have to pay for it. For anyone that's never dealt with Wedding Wire or The Knot, basically the people that pay money, you pay for your play. Placement. So typically there is spotlight DJs at the very very top and there's only like a few they limit the amount of spotlight DJs that can be on the placement those are the top dollar spots you pay for it at the very top below that are featured uh, I don't believe they have a limit on featured but that's normally your second level of payment and then they have like pro I think and then they have free accounts. And now with the free account, obviously you are not gonna be very high up on the placement, maybe like the third page of results. The main point of having a free account on Wedding Wire and The Knot is that they are a great place to have reviews. And that's actually a tip for anyone that actually wants to start paying for Wedding Wire and The Knot. Don't start paying off the get-go. Get on there for free. Get yourself 10 or so reviews. Get yourself started with some reviews then pay for the account and, and actually get it up on the listing. You want to have some reviews on there before you start marketing your reviews. I hope that makes sense. You don't want to pay for a listing if you don't have any reviews to showcase. So go set up a free wedding wire and a not account and get some of your past clients to leave some reviews and get the ball rolling. All right, social media, wedding wire, the not, great ways to do some free marketing. But in our industry, in the DJ industry, the number one source of events, the number one source of weddings, the number one source of business in general is referrals. And it would be a disjustice for me to make this video on free marketing and not talk about the number one free way that we get events and leads and bookings and how you can optimize that. So with referrals and in particular with weddings, our couples are great sources of future referrals. They're gonna go talk to their other close friends that are also getting married and maybe refer us to them. It's a great source of referrals. But how many of those close friends do they actually have to give you a referral? Three, five, maybe 10? Now what other source of possible referrals are at all of the weddings that we do. You probably see where I'm going with this. Vendors, other professional wedding vendors. Vendors can be and should be your number one priority to try and gain referrals off of because they are doing a crap ton of other weddings and have a lot of other couples that they can refer to you. And I kind of already touched on this in the social media section when I talked about following all of the vendors that you're gonna be working with on like Instagram, on Facebook, like their pages and tag them in the post that you make with the events that you're doing with them. One additional thing that I do with wedding vendors is I contact all of them before every single wedding and every single event. I contact them normally the week of and I send them over a copy of the timeline that I have and I try to see if the timeline works with them. Nine times out of 10 it does. Sometimes with uh, photographers I do it a little bit sooner, maybe like two weeks out but it's just starting that little bit of conversation with them 
to get them to know you better, to network. And then at the event, obviously, I make time to go chat with all the other vendors, show them the face that they've been talking to via text or phone call or email. That way they see my face in person, give them a business card, take their business card, etc. And then after the wedding or the event, I always send either like a quick text or an email following up with a vendor, just basically saying, hey, had a great time working with you. Maybe if it's the caterer, I mentioned, hey, the food was amazing, I love the steak. Or the photographer, hey, if you got some awesome shots, I'd love to share them on social media. The venue, talk about how great the venue was. Just little conversation pieces, just basically building that networking. And lastly, one bonus thing with vendors. If you really like a vendor, if you like worked with them and they were like one of the best photographers you ever worked with, add them to your referral list for other clients. One of the easiest ways to win over a vendor is to refer business to them. And that's really something I do with like every single lead I get. I always ask my lead basically, hey, are you looking for any other vendors? This is like after we have our conversation about DJing and all that. But at the end, I always ask them like, hey, are you looking for any other vendors? I'd love to refer uh, a vendor that you might be looking for that I like to work with as well, such as like a photographer, a videographer, a cakery, florist, etc. And if they are looking for those, I'm gonna refer those top people that I really like working with to that couple. And I would word it somewhere along the lines of like, if they're looking for a photographer, I'd be like, oh, you're looking for a photographer? Oh, I love working with Sarah. Here's her phone number, here's her email, tell her I sent you. So spend the time building relationships with the vendors in your area. It'll help you tremendously. And there you go. Build your referral network with your vendors. Work on your social media, post some stuff, tag other vendors, tag your couples, follow your couples on social media, post some videos of you out in the wild on YouTube, make sure you do your tags right, all that good stuff, guys. Get yourself a free knot and a free wedding wire account at least so that you can collect some awesome reviews on that site so that when you want to go and do the paid version, you'll have a bunch of awesome reviews on there already. Slap a like on this video if you like the content and leave down the comment section down below if you guys want me to redo this video but make it about paid marketing that I do because with Fusion Sound and Lighting, we're spending roughly around eight to $10,000 a year on marketing. I do have a lot of numbers and a lot of figures I can show you guys in terms of the ROIs, the return on investment that we're getting in different marketing areas. So if you guys wanna see how I spend about $10,000 a year on marketing, be sure to leave it down in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to make a video on that in the coming weeks. Oh, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button because if I make that video, you're gonna to wanna to be notified uh, when I post that video. Lastly, shameless plug, if you like this t-shirt that I've been wearing in the whole entire video, we still have a lot of this shirt in stock. This is the Eat Sleep DJ Repeat shirt. It's super dope. Honestly, I think it's the best shirt in the whole entire collection that we got, but shopdjlife.com, we have all kinds of awesome shirts and a few hoodies still in stock. But anyways, guys, like always, my name is DJ Rick Webb. Keep them records spinning, and I will see you guys next time with an amazing, awesome video. Peace.